you were looking for content that spoke to you as a woman over 40 and you weren't seeing it. So you thought, okay, let me go and create it myself. Does that sound about right? Yes, that's right. A 20 something will not having the same issues of a 40 something. And they, they maybe didn't find someone on YouTube who could answer to the, to the demands or to the, the, the issues and problems, you know. And, uh, now I got those women said, Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I found you on YouTube. Finally, someone who speak the same language as me in terms of passion and things like that. And I'm very modern and young at heart. Trust me. So to me, 40, 50, it's just a number. Hello there, I'm Jonathan Santiago, and welcome to the Video Craft Show presented by Video Husky. Every other week, I interview content creators about their stories, strategies, and experiences of building an online audience through video. Now, when it comes to fashion, do you struggle to create your own unique style? Then perhaps you should check out the YouTube channel of this week's guests on the Video Craft Show presented by Video Husky. Frederic Bros is a French YouTuber based in Australia who's made a name for herself creating content Content for women on style and fashion. Through her videos, she aims to inspire others how to find their own sense of style that's classy and chic without breaking the bank. Now, Frederique started her YouTube channel in 2020 when, like the rest of the world, COVID forced her to reset. Nearly two years later, at the time of this interview, she's built a loyal following of close to 160,000 subscribers and more than 12 million YouTube views. Now, in this episode of the Video Craft Show presented by Video, Video Husky, I speak to Frederic about starting a YouTube channel in a time of great uncertainty, plus the importance of embracing being bad when you first start creating, how she learned how to deal with negative feedback and criticism, and why age shouldn't matter when deciding to start a YouTube channel or not, and so much more. We are going to toss it very soon to this conversation with Frederic Burroughs here on the Video Craft Show presented by Video Husky, but wanna remind all of you, if you haven't already, if you would like to subscribe to the show, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and to subscribe to the Video Craft Show wherever it is that you can get your podcasts. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and pretty much every podcast player in between. You can go to www.videocraftshow.com to learn more. Now let's go ahead and toss it to my conversation with Frederic Bros. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Video Craft Show presented by Video Husky. It is a pleasure to have you on and a pleasure also to chat with you again. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for having me. I'm so, so excited. We've been talking about this interview. It's quite a few months now. So here we are. And I'm really looking forward to chat much more in details with you. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I, for, for context, for everybody listening, Frederic at one point in time tried out Video Husky. She's gone on and, and built her own internal team, which I definitely want to talk to her about. But, you know, even though she no longer works with us, I, I like talking to content creators and want to see content creators like Frederic succeed. So I felt like we had a pretty good rapport when, you know, we met through sales calls and whatnot and trying to help you with Absolutely. our service. And I'm like, hey, you know, even though it doesn't work out, do you want to come on my podcast? And you were so gracious <laughs> enough still to uh to accept the invitation so i appreciate that no problem my pleasure yeah so you know i obviously want to start you know in these conversations with creators like yourself i like to kind of go back into time um and i'm curious about for you um where did you know the creative element aspect of your life come from um you know i know that prior to doing youtube you know you were running a web design agency for quite some time um you know what how, what what are like your earliest memories when it comes to just being a creative person overall oh my gosh this question is killing me i'm going to answer very very young age i was this quiet little kid you could just giving some colorful crayons and paper and i will be like in my world so i used to draw when i was young and then in my early 20s i went to special college and i got double diploma one in graphic design and one in multimedia and multimedia got already access to the video which i was really 
graphics at it, but at the time I wanted to be a graphic and web designer. And that was one of my questions to one of my teachers. How do you keep your creativity? How do you feed this, this need of expressing yourself? You know, and she's always said to me, you need to travel, you need to go to a museum, you're reading books. And actually, I think it comes quite naturally. And YouTube is just another way to express yourself and to express your personality to try to help people or make them laugh or if you can do both it's even better and it just uh, I don't I, I don't want to sound it's very natural for me it's very natural mm -hmm. I still got the business side in me definitely because I'm very down to earth but um like I said, I had a friend who came over this weekend. She's a great cook. I can't even boil an egg. And I said to her as a <laughs> joke, and I said, look, I'm good at a lot of things, but definitely not in the kitchen. And we were talking about work. <laughs> and uh, this is this is the referral. So I think when you're really good at something, keep going, nurture this creativity. And and because it's, it's, it's a gift. I definitely believe strongly that it's a gift and you should – you should keep going, especially if you have people who love watching you, your content and, and share it and, and want more is you're definitely doing something good. Mm -hmm. Well, well, did you have people in your life at a young age who encouraged you to be creative or was this something that you just, you know, you loved it yourself and you just stuck to it in spite of maybe what other people might have been saying about pursuing a creative no. path? Not really. Maybe my parents, because they wanted to have peace. Otherwise, I was this kid who was with going outside and doing sport. No, no, I think I was lucky enough to travel a very young age, which I keep doing until until COVID. And, um, mm -hmm. and to be exposed to different culture, races, um, religion and food, um, weather, yeah. everything. And, um, that definitely was part of my creativity and be, and it helps me as well to become the person who I am now. Um, that's definitely, I'm sure the traveling part is really massive for, for myself, for my creativity. And I love arts. I love going to museum. I love doing it in Paris, especially, or even just go to a small photo art gallery from a, I don't know, mysterious photographer, but the photos are so expressive or they really, um, touch me emotionally. I will definitely react to that. I do not react to a, I don't know, a cooking show, but I definitely react to, <laughs> I don't know, something like, you know, the makeover when people flipping houses or room or talk about feng shui or things. And it's just like, it's my world. And I realize why I'm creative when I talk with a friend who is not. And she's, and she's an amazing person. This is why it happened this weekend. And, and I say things and uh -huh. then I'm like, Oh my gosh. And she said, you're such a creative person. I said, look, stop talking. We went on on a hike stop talking look at the lights going through the, the leaf of the trees look at the lights it's beautiful and suddenly i thought i was in la la land i wasn't i was just in my <laughs> world and she wasn't she wow. just said oh yeah enjoy the fresh air but it's very humid i said no look at the light <laughs> Wow. All right. That's incredible. Like you have a very, you have, you're, you're very, you're a very observant person. It seems like you're able to notice detail. It sounds like, especially if yeah. somebody, I wonder if that's something that you were able to cultivate by visiting museums and having an appreciation for art. Because when you go to a museum, let's say you're looking at a sculpture or you're looking at a painting, you know, there's that, that idea of like standing and looking at it for a very long time and then coming up with your own interpretation. Is that something that maybe helped you develop this I observation love ability? I love that. But I have a very critic of a side opinion or so. Um, but I, I love that. So I'm painting it just like, yeah, but don't forget I'm born in France and the culture in front <laughs> is all about the architecture and even right. um and going to museums. So we exposed to subconsciously, I would say almost to this type of um art, different type of art, you know, and even mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back to the food. Maybe I'm hungry, I don't know. Um but even when you serve <laughs> when time, you right? serve a plate, yeah, yeah, probably. Um when you serve a plate, it should be minimum three colors. When you want to decorate a mm. coffee table, it should be three elements. And, um, yeah, it's just elements like that. And then you come back to what I do now for a living about helping 
um, we're going to talk about it. I'm sure you're going to have plenty of questions, but helping women how to dress up better and feeling better about themselves. And the, the three colors, the three, the item of three, it always work. And it, I don't know, but I think it's part as well of where you grew up, what you're being exposed on a very young age. If it's not travel, maybe it's you live in a beautiful city, architectural, and you're proud of it and you understand and you study the history. You know, I think it's just a, a full package. It doesn't come in 24 hours and you wake up and say, hey, I'm creative. No, no, no. It doesn't mm-hmm. come back like that. <laughs> yeah. No, that's another amazing thing to think about because you spent a significant amount of your life in Paris, right? Are you Were you born and raised in Paris or you spent part of your adulthood in Paris? So I'm born in Brittany, which is the west part of France, close to the um, ocean, Atlantic Ocean. I was looking for it. Yeah. But I lived in Paris for 10 years, from 18 to yeah. 28 and uh it's a tough city but it's a crazy fun yeah. city especially in your 20s as you can imagine <laughs> but i travel as well a lot i was a flight attendant for six years so i traveled the world for three times and i did myself on my own around the world for a year so to me travel it's absolutely a a must have a must keep going to to nurture everything and and living in Paris, I'm not going to say, but yes, Paris is the most beautiful city in the world in terms of architecture and history. Mm. Um, it's just like everywhere you are. It's something from three, four centuries ago, you know, and you just have to appreciate it. And when you do, then you just, you know, you just keep enjoying. But yeah, I think it's, it's, it's important. It's really important. Yes. Love Paris. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Being impaired, because what what that calls to mind for me, just as someone, you being someone that spent very formative years of your life, basically like your adult, your young adulthood in Paris and being exposed to the kind of art there that, like you said, you see it everywhere. It's there in the architecture. It's there in the streets. And that kind of being like an inspiration for you because that historically Paris has been like an inspirational place for for artists and creatives to to gather to um and to visit i mean that that just is like you know and to do it, do it for a decade has had it sounds like it's had such a profound impact on your life i'm curious too about the uh you know the travels around the world what other places did you spend time at that had profound impacts on the way that you see the world creatively i was hoping you will not ask me this (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh i um i will say the countries who really impact me the most is when i traveled as a backpacker on my own or with someone Mm. um I can't, I can't put a list for you together because some countries in Africa really, really touch me so deeply that I want to go back. I love traveling in South Asia. I'm lucky enough to, this was one of the reasons to move to Australia because I'm close to South Asia. And every time yeah. I visit a new country, which I used to do once per year before COVID, it's always different and it's always I have amazing, amazing memories of the people I meet and the things I'm doing and trying to learn a few words from the languages, etc. Um, I will say South Asia. I think, I think I'm going to just going to give you an area. I can't give you one country. This, this is not yeah. fair. Oh, I, <laughs> this is not fair. I understand. I understand. I've traveled a lot myself and a lot of people will ask me like, what's your favorite country you've been to? And, you know, I've been to, more than 30 plus countries and it's almost like if i had kids like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna pick like my favorite child you know i they all have their (laughs) own they all have their own uh unique meaning to me you know like there are places that were that that were like pleasant surprises to me that i didn't expect to love as much as i did and and whatnot so i can totally empathize with what you're with what you're saying there as far as um you know be it's tough once you've traveled to so many places it's really hard to kind of narrow it down to one to one that has like the most impact on you or most you know yeah most uh, yeah, most impact every, on every you every time you every time you travel that was happening for me. I don't know for you. I fall in love mm. of the country each time, but in a different way. Of course, it has mm. to be different because they're different, different countries. Every time it's something that I love so much in this country, I'm like, oh my God, 
Lord, that was so much fun. That was so, the food yeah. was so good. Um, it, it's, it's falling in love every time, but in such a good way. You, you embrace the culture, you embrace the people, you embrace the, the thing in your own country will totally shock you. And like, you're like, just, oh my gosh. It's, is that amazing? <laughs> Don't yeah. ask me to give you details. We're going to be here for hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be for like another podcast, like a separate podcast. Maybe I'll have to just start a travel podcast and we can talk more oh in depth gosh, about that, that at some point. I really love that. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, you know what? I should just refer you to some other friends that I have who are travel podcasters. They probably want it, would want to interview you about that. Um, you could talk about that, that in great. depth too with them. <laughs> but so, I mean, to, to, to switch gears and kind of go back to, um, I guess like the, one of the main focuses of your YouTube channel is, and you touched on this a moment ago, it's just being able to help people figure out their own sense of style and fashion through, you know, your own eye and your own voice on YouTube. So yes. where does that come from for you? Like where, I mean, I can kind of make a guess just because you're French and, you know, I think French people in general have a very good sense of fashion and style. Like the world <laughs> looks to, to France for, for what is, um, what is chic. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I would want to know where, where that originated from your interest in, in being able to, to help people with, with their own style and fashion. Yeah. So I, <laughs> Sounds so cliche to say that, but I always love fashion. I always, and not forget, I'm going to get killed with that, but the most famous fashion designer in the world, the most, okay, I'm going to give, give the biggest, biggest brand, they are French. And again, when you live in Paris, you are exposed to that all the time. If not, even if you just go to a party and you meet someone with an amazing high-end designer handbag, you can finally touch it. We do the same with perfume. We do the same with clothes. And um, and I, I don't know if he, he happens step by step, the same way when you grow up with a big city like Paris. And um, he only come up to me 20 years ago when I moved to Australia, dressing up exactly the same way I used to do in France. And people will approach me and say, oh, my gosh, you look so French. You're so classy. You're so sophisticated. <laughs> wow. And I'm like, I'm wearing a pair of jeans and a shirt. What are you talking about? And I didn't understand. It took me a long time to to understand because here they're more chill and relaxed. It's the beach vibe, you know, and, and which is fine with it. But you difficult to look chic on a beach vibe unless you – anyway. Um, so he come up with that and then um, – because I worked for years in technology and web development and design. So, but again, my, the design, web design, the creativity with graphic uh, designs, I was still helping my clients for logos, website and brandy identity, etc. And then when I started creating my YouTube channel two years ago, I thought I wanted to do something different. I wanted to get out a bit of the IT part. And I thought, what, how can I help people? What is so different from me? that no one has or very rare people. And I thought I can speak English. At least I'm trying. Um, I'm over 40. I'm a woman. I live in Australia, but I'm born in France and I love fashion. And I start doing my own marketing research and just watching <laughs> what's a good marketing research research is just yeah. watching fashion of videos. And then yeah. I saw some videos and I'm like, girls were doing something similar and I'm like, yeah, that's good. But actually they didn't talk about this. And slowly it was molding me in my videos. Um, and I thought I had so much to share and I didn't know how it would be accepted. I didn't know. Um, I, I just had no idea how I'm going to be perceived because I thought no one's going to understand my strong accent. I'm not in my twenties and I'm starting on YouTube. This is insane. And then I starting to create this community and my, my advantage was to always, always answer to comments. And trust me, sometimes it was three, four hours in a row and I'm answering to comments. Wow. And this is helping me for my videos. I always ask a question to, not only recognize and, and, and creating an amazing uh, community, but as well as feedback. 
And suddenly I, cre- I, I realized as well, some women over 40, they don't have the same problem with the body issues or the way they dressed up that the twenties. Okay. And then I start mm. doing more niche in terms of, um, body shape. Um, some, some women have problem, uh, losing weight around the menopause. So they should wear this type of clothes and, and it's just starting like that. And suddenly by just more listening to my, my audience and not just because I'm going to wake up in the morning and say, Hey, I want to do a video just about hats, but it needs to not only solve a problem for someone, but if I can help. And when soon I have a mm-hmm. comment said, Oh my gosh, you helped me so much. I dressed up. I had a message recently. This is why it's fresh in my head. And the lady said, mm-hmm. now my, my, my husband's paying me compliment every day. And I'm like, Oh, if look, if I help you, can help you with your sexual life. I'm so happy. You know? <laughs> and we just, we just had a joke and with lots of emoji and, um, but you know, I'm a bit cheeky. So I'm a bit direct. So at the end, I'm still very yeah. French. Still also very Australian because I have a typical Australian expression and the way I move is very Australian and French. It's for some people, it's so confusing. It's like, it's, it sounds like you just arrived yesterday in Australia, you know, they're going to say that. <laughs> and, it's, and, and then you, your accent, you still, I know, I said, I know, I'm not going to, this, this is real, this is how I am. And that did help me to... To, to be who I am now on YouTube is not extraordinary what I do, but on my little level, on my little niche, if I can help even one woman per day with a style, with a confidence, with a body issues, um, with just having a love because I'm always here to make some pranks and cracking really silly jokes. Sometimes I'm rewatching the videos, especially when I do the editing. I'm like, should I keep this part? Should I leave it? I'm like, okay, leave it. And if they react to that, and I'm like, okay. So, uh, I forgot your question. <laughs> I forgot your question. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, we went down, we went down a good route here because it kind of opens up the conversation, uh, opens us, opens a lane for us to go into the conversation about how you started your YouTube channel. But there are things that I, you know, from what you were saying there, that I, I want to, I want to circle back on that I find really fascinating, and that it is almost like you you identified a gap in the market. Like let's look at fashion and style as like one big gigantic niche. And then you have like the typical fashion blog vloggers or style vloggers who they're probably generally going to be like millennials or younger. And they're speaking mostly to that audience, but you know that YouTube is used by so many people now. It's not just a young person's platform. And so you started to create content that that spoke to people like yourself because there wasn't there wasn't anybody like because you were looking for content that spoke to you as a woman over 40 and you weren't seeing it so you thought okay let me go and create it myself does that sound about right yes that's right i still did some research about um um, those fashion YouTubers, you know, or the bloggers, and I'm not even talking about Instagram. And, and I think what they do, it's really fantastic, but true. Um, a, a 20 something will not having the same exceptionally, of course, some issues of a 40 something. And even yeah. if you reverse that, and if you are part of the audience, most of the time when you watch YouTube, you watch someone who un- unconsciously maybe look a bit like you, okay? Um, yeah. In terms of age and in terms of whatever you're going to learn through the video. And if I, if I get you for my video and, uh, and you learn at the end of the video, I don't know how to style a black t-shirt, you know, in 10 times, then you say, Oh my gosh, I have a black t-shirt. This is who talks. Well, okay. I can do this. I can do that. So I think the gap in the committee, it was a community still actually, sorry, of 40 plus. It's not only my committee. I got the youngest one as well. 
and they call me right. auntie, which I love it. And I'm like, auntie, auntie <laughs> Frenchy, cool. auntie Freddy. I'm like, I love it. I'd be auntie of so many people around the world. I love it, love it, love it. And they, they maybe didn't find someone on YouTube who could answer to the, to the demands or to the, the, the issues and problems, you know? And, uh, now I got those women said, Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I found you on YouTube. Finally, someone who speak the same language as me in terms of passion and things like that. And I'm very modern and young at heart. Trust me. So to me, 40, 50 is just a number because. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a number. So that, that helps as well. You know, I'm not here behind the desk and say, okay, today we're going to talk about shoes. You know, <laughs> thanks God. I don't do it like that. <laughs> but, um, Yes, I think it was a lot of people as well. The other side of the screen wanted to have this type of content and couldn't find it on YouTube. So definitely mm-hmm. a gap. And, and it, it, we just connect with each other. And yeah, it was, it works well. It works really well. But don't forget as well, millennials, 2030s, they are extremely familiar with social media. So they will follow right. more someone in their own age group. So those people will grow faster on YouTube. Instagram, TikTok, which it completely makes sense. To me, it's a little bit um, sometimes tricky if I try to ask my audience to follow me on TikTok because I know it's not going to happen. Mm. But it doesn't matter because suddenly on TikTok, I have a different audience. And it still works because it's styling tips. It works for everybody at the end of the day, you know, unless it's a bad body shape or body issue that's a little bit more specific. And and then Instagram is, again, is the different way you use Instagram. Instagram is more like me, 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 you know, be, 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 be. But YouTube, you can really reach a broad uh, audience and even have some guys following me, which always make me smile. I'm like, oh my gosh, really? <laughs> can you make a video for guys? And I would love to do some fashion tips for guys. But the thing is, I'm not a guy. What I'm going yeah. to tell you, I would rather to be sure that if I recommend you something, because I experienced myself, or a product I tested myself. I'm not going to say to a guy, hey, you should wear this. And I'm sure, and I check already on YouTube, that a lot of guys doing really well in fashion and styling as well, you know? But no, I'm sorry. I'm not going to make videos for guys. Only about tips about how dating a guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, another thing that you just mentioned there, Frederic, that I want to touch on is just the differences between the platforms and the audiences that you've built on TikTok now, I think you have almost like what is it around like fifty thousand followers on, on oh, TikTok. Oh no, you're very Just generous. No, it's not. I, I'm not thirty-five thousand going. Okay, that's no. Cool. You have like around thirty-five thousand followers on TikTok. You've got oh, close to around hundred fifty, hundred sixty thousand subscribers on YouTube. I don't have your Instagram up right now, but I'm sure you have a pretty healthy following there. Um, yeah. Do you find that one platform is more I guess, community-oriented than the other? Like, is YouTube the place where you feel like you have more dialogue with people and can kind of get their feedback? Or are you starting to sense maybe TikTok is like that or even Instagram? Okay, Instagram, I'm going to be honest with you, it's uh, not my favorite uh, social media. Um, Yeah. I I just don't like the way it works. I don't like its control. I don't like the algorithm change and suddenly you blocked. I don't like the way it's make very difficult to to share a link. Uh, To me, YouTube is the best. And this is where my energy, my time and my work is focused on because I love using videos as a medium. I really love it. Either with the short, the long, Either way, it's a funny one or a more serious one. I love YouTube. And because you can answer or ask any comments on YouTube, but if someone wants to connect with me directly, they will definitely send me an email because of, again, my audience uh, age group. Um, sometimes mm-hmm. they DM me on Instagram. I barely check my messages on Instagram, <laughs> to be honest with you. But on YouTube, I don't miss one. And, uh, and even if I don't answer to each of them, because sometimes I have 2,000 comments on one video, that's killing me, but I still read them and like them. So I know I'm, I'm like, okay, I, I read them. And I always answer to them. And 
yeah, to me is the, the, the best. I know if someone wants something a little bit more personal, they're not going to use YouTube because everybody can read the, the message. Okay. For TikTok, it's totally different. TikTok people don't leave messages or very rare. What they do is not a nice one to, they don't want to connect with you. They just say, um, oh. but they will follow you. They will put your likes on your videos. And I realized that TikTok, the way to communicate, they will share your video. That's my opinion. I think they share more on TikTok than on Instagram. And mm. uh, on TikTok, the algorithm is such, um, we don't know. It's something in the air, the algorithm, TikTok algorithm. <laughs> we don't know. No, no one can understand yeah. one day you, you grow very slow and the day after you got 10,000 followers, you're like, okay. So I think TikTok, I like a bit of a, the freedom because it's a new app. It's, it's, it's fresh. Um, and I starting to fall in love with TikTok only a few months ago when, um, it was more interesting and people sharing tips or sometimes the city dance. And it really, really, it works to me. Instagram is aesthetically beautiful it's beauty it's clothes it's things but because people use so many filters to me it becomes an effect thing you know and i just like i, I don't want to have the fake thing and tiktok to me is still a bit authentic for youtube mm -hmm. as you know behind one video it's so many hours of work of research, of yeah. scripting and preparing and filming and editing, even just to upload the video into YouTube and then sharing on social media. So much work that, um, it, yeah, I, I think, I think to be a really good content entrepreneur, you need to stay focused on one platform, which you're really good at that you keep improving every day and you have a great audience, which you communicate with the rest is maybe trying to create the traffic back to the platform of your choice. Um, but th that will, that's my strategy. But I still love TikTok yeah. because of the video and because sometimes it just sometimes I'm like, Hey, I'm going to do something stupid. And I have a social <laughs> media manager on that and he said, okay, that was interesting. I said, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you I would post this. <laughs> Don't worry. Let's go back <laughs> to the styling tips. <laughs> um, yeah. So to me, YouTube is. I know we, the only problem with YouTube and the, the nice things as well is to, to me, YouTube growing on YouTube can be very slow, but yeah. I think YouTube as well is a, always a learning curve and they improve the platform all the time. They have many, many videos in studio creator that you can access. So you know what is going to change in the next few months. They always try to, to do something new, which most of the time are copies on other platform. And, um, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm a big YouTube lover. I think about it all the time outside of my videos. So I'm trying to change sometimes my, my videos or get a little bit more. You know, when I do my fashion reviews, when I do my rants, they love it. And it brings me new, uh, new subscribers. I just, I, I like to do a mix of everything. It's great for me as a creator. YouTube is a, is a playground, but yeah, a business playground as well, but a playground. Yeah. Is, yeah. But it's, it's a big playground. I never get tired of it. Uh, I never, my friend lately asking me, but how do you create? Like, I mean, I post three long videos over 10 minutes per week plus a short and i try to do a tiktok per day but i'm preparing this and um and at the end if i calculate if i just took about videos 30, i think it's 40 or to 40 to 60 videos per month okay yeah that sounds yeah. a lot that sounds a lot okay that sounds a lot that sounds crazy because i do the teaser on instagram to bring back my to my videos etc but i love it it takes time, but I love it. Absolutely love it. And I see the progress of my channel. I see my community who is growing. And, and trust me, it's not an easy audience as well. I'm going to say it's not an easy audience. You know, they will be, they will tell you straight and not in your face, but for a message and say, yeah, oh, you say something wrong, blah, blah, blah. You say vertical line, but you were talking about horizontal lines. And so, sometimes I want to say, do you realize English is my second language? <laughs> but I'm not <laughs> saying that. I just said that now too late, but I'm like, okay, noted. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> 
Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. That's one thing I always, one of the things that I'm always curious about when I talk to creators like yourself who've built traction for themselves, gotten success, you have an audience is dealing with the feedback that you get from people because not all feedback is good feedback. You know, not all Mm -hmm. of it is constructive is what I'm trying to say. So how do you, how do you develop a a radar or sense for the kinds of feedback that's going to help take your videos to the next level versus throwing the feedback that is just pointless and, and negative and, and, you know, not, not at all like productive for you to the side Uh, that, that I imagine is still something that you are constantly trying to, to figure out even to this day at at the level that you're at. Yes. Look, um, being, a public figure for two years on YouTube, you learn. And, uh, and I'm not going to lie. I had moments, especially at the beginning. And, uh, uh I got those comments so ridiculous <laughs> about my nationality mm-hmm. or the way I look, especially when it's something more personal, you know, or, or they say my accent is fake. I'm not French. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, are you serious? Um, it hurts. And sometimes it is very sad on 100 positive comments. You have one really horrible and the horrible one's going to stick with you for two, three days. So you need to check your mental health regularly and you, you learn, you learn to be stronger, to, to grow a thick skin and say, you know what? That's probably just a miserable person living in the basement with the mom, you know, and it just, Probably, and I heard, I learned as well recently, I don't even know that exists. People follow you to hate you. Did you know that? Oh, Some yeah. I've heard, that? Well, I've heard that before. Like, I, you know, yeah. I don't know if you know um, this one creator, um, Cassandra Thompson. Um, she okay. does, she does like, she does like career advice. And she was on this podcast uh, not too long ago. Um, and she talked about how, people made like hate channels about her. Like they, they went through the effort to just create yeah. content to dispute her and, and put her oh down, which is, first of all, I question, I'm like, who has the time for that? Why are yeah. you obsessing over this person that you probably have never met in person? Um, but it's, it's weird what people, what people will do when, you know, they don't have actual face-to-face social interaction with other yes. human beings. Yes. And and I, I saw in December, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it, um, a blog, they are literally criticizing, this is the best word and the polite word I'm going to use, YouTubers. And mm. with, and because it's a very popular blog, I'm not going to tell you which one, they have really good keywords. So they show up quite good on Google search. And I saw a part of that me. And you need to be a, um, you need to log in to answer. And I was so close to do it because I saw the comments and they don't tell you they wrote that about you. And they don't give you the opportunity to answer, which would be quite ugly with me because I'm such a fighter. And I thought, mm-hmm. So sometimes I always say in my com- in my videos now, please just leave your like you, you can comment. Or sometimes if the comment is a little bit just passive aggressive, but you know some people do that very well. I just say thank you, troll. Have a great day. <laughs> I'm just like, and the really bad one. Obviously, you block them. You report to YouTube. Um, and you know YouTube has very strict rules. They're getting more and more strict as well, actually this this year as well. And I really appreciate that to protect as well the creators about the it's not negative feedback. If I have what I call a constructive feedback, will be someone who said, "Hey, the sound in this video was not so good," or the music yeah. is uh, too loud and I can barely hear your voice, uh, or. I don't know when I got my two screen on my computers and I turned around and I keep talking and my microphone is there. I should know better, but sometimes, <laughs> you know, you forget, you feel like you have your friends yeah. in your room and you say, Oh, by the way, and you're not talking in the microphone. So that to me, that's fine because we're here to improve. We're not professionals. I mean, we're professionals when we do, but at the end we're learning. And this is why, because we make mistakes. This is why people like 
our content and how we are because we are real. We are like us, you know. I met someone recently who recognized me in a grocery shop when I didn't look my best, wow. by the way. It was 8 a.m. And at the cashier, the lady looked at me weird and I was wearing like crap pants. My hair was like that, no makeup. And I was just already in my walk mode, like thinking I have to do this after that. Be quick, quick, quick grocery shopping and I can go to work. And the ladies <laughs> look at me very weird. I know you. And I thought, what the? And I said, I'm, I'm sorry. She said, I watched your video. I'm like, oh my gosh, here <laughs> I go. And you, you never, never prepare for a moment like that. And then we went to the mm. parking and keep talking. And she said, oh my gosh, you're so tiny. You look so much taller on your video. But it was nice. I don't know why I'm saying you that, but she, she was great support and sometimes is great as well. Oh, sorry, sorry to, to, to meet your audience as well. That's, um, okay. To summarize for the comment, um, you have, when you create the, when you create this committee and the way I do to really answering to each of them, to recognize each of them, um, it helps sometimes because sometimes I don't have time to review all the comments. And when it's someone passive aggressive, let's call her a Karen. Okay. When we have a Karen and there's always a Karen somewhere, mm -hmm. someone called me a, Car a French Karen in one of my videos. Oh, you're such a French Karen. I'm like, and I just also back. Excellent. You, you, I said, you met my dad. That was so funny. And I don't think they meant to be funny, but to me, it was funny. Uh, when we have mm -hmm. a Karen, Sometimes I don't have time to answer. The committee will do for you. And I yeah. like that. And it's still, it's still a very correct way. If it goes way too far, it will be already removed from uh, the spam. You know, it will be filtered because you filter with some keywords. But I like that sometimes. And I had one this morning said, oh, didn't answer. And already some people said, this is nonsense. You don't know her. Watch this video. And I thought, they do my job. This is great. And that's all about creating and be with your community. Because at the end of the day, I always said, yes, you put so many hard work of hours behind a video, building your channel, being yourself and, and creating quality content and etc. But at the end of the day, it's just not for you. I watch my videos at least only once when I post it just to be sure it's no, you know, but it's too late. But, and, and to see the, mis the, the comments. But at the end of the day, those videos, I know how to dress up. I know my body shape. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just like, <laughs> it's fine. I don't know, but I, I know. So, but if behind the, the other side of the screen, somewhere in the world, I can help someone, that's to me that I, that's it's not even a job. This is like consider me as an auntie, your best friend, your little voice when you're in front of your wardrobe and say, Hey, you know, I don't wear this color with that. <laughs> yeah. That that I mean, that is really what makes YouTube and I mean YouTube in general, not so I don't think you know, the other social media platforms have this kind of quality. Maybe TikTok is starting to get there, but definitely YouTube in the sense of you're you know, you're seeing somebody in their raw, authentic form, you know, and it's almost like, you know, you're having a real conversation with people. You're not, it's not like traditional television where you have this big studio and, you know, you're up here on the pedestal and the audience is down here. Um, you're, you see yourself on the same level as the audience, you know, Absolutely. that you're, you're learning with them and, and they're learning with you. And I think that's what, what makes YouTube, um, you know, makes YouTube and YouTubers like yourself really resonate with the people that you ultimately reach. Absolutely. It's, it's very interactive. You, you, I, I to me, YouTube, oh yes, I wanted to say that. that I, I remember I wanted to, I wanted to say to you like two minutes ago. YouTube was really big and it really starting in more in a serious way, let's say 10 years. And some YouTubers, uh -huh. maybe in the last five, eight years, let, please interrupt me if you don't agree or if I say something wrong. They, because of the algorithm was probably a bit easier to grow. They grow like crazy big community. Um, where we are now, maybe in five years time, someone's going to say, Oh, you know, the YouTubers started during the COVID. That was the best time to start a YouTube channel. I think it's always the best time to start a YouTube channel because YouTube 
it's such a serious platform. By themselves, they're looking forward to improve everything. They always support the creators, no matter what. Even they have strict rules. But if you play by the rules, it's it's a, it's an amazing excuse me an amazing platform, and I can't wait to see how YouTube is going to take us all creators in the next five years or ten years. I don't know if I will still make videos in ten years time. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure I will because I can see those women <laughs> and they're a bit older and they look amazing and they they have like a million of subscribers and they're just doing so well and they have fun. I think it keeps you young. I think it just gives you like modern. You need to keep up with the the news and the the, the technology and the social media because it's changing all the time. I, I just sorry, I love it. I love it. I think YouTube is going to be even bigger in the next five or 10 years. And I think yeah. some people, if they don't create a YouTube channel now, whatever it's for the personal brand, for the business, just for fun, um, they're going to regret it in five years time. Like I regretted I didn't do five years ago, but maybe five years ago, I was not ready. Mm. Um, yeah, I hope it makes sense. What do you think? No, I totally agree with you. I do think, I mean, this is something that I hear, you know, Mr. Beast, you know, obviously one of the, mm. the uh, not not one of, but like the, the top biggest. YouTuber, the biggest YouTuber, the guy, I, I think of Mr. Beast as like the Michael Jordan of YouTube, his obsession with how to like tinker and tweak videos every single time is just kind of incredible. But you hear him say that in interviews where he thinks like, yeah, I yeah. like these other platforms and I dabble with them here and there i know how to to maximize my my reach and 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 output on those platforms but i just think that youtube is going to keep growing and you know, rightfully so like right now a lot of people especially over the last two years there's been a lot of hype around tiktok and they have changed the game they've forced their competitors like youtube and instagram to adapt to them and and do short form content but i still think there is a place for for long form video. I mean, it's not like, mm. you know, we're going to go into this whole world where everything has to be like 20 seconds or less. I would hope that's not the case. Um, but YouTube, there's, there's, there's just an infinite amount of opportunity on YouTube. Um, and I, like you, I'm kind of excited to see where it goes, you know, moving mm. forward into the future. But I, I want to ask you about kind of going back to your story of getting started on YouTube, because you started your channel during COVID, right? Like at the beginning or at the February, a little bit into February COVID? 2020, February 2020. Yeah. So like right as it was, as the world was yeah. literally starting to slowly shut down, obviously your business that you were running before then um, was seriously impacted by that. How long were you already thinking about doing a YouTube channel before 2020 and what stopped you from actually taking the leap before then? Years ago, I used to have a blog and I was writing about articles about technology for women, apps and things like that. And I went to this big conference. It was probably almost 10 years ago. And during one of those conferences, it was one guy said, start a YouTube channel. And I was so excited about it, but I was so scared being in front of the camera and I thought, what am I going to talk about? You know, but I always remember this guy. And then um, a few years ago, I was starting a small YouTube channel that you cannot find anymore. <laughs> and I was doing those mm -hmm. videos about websites and I was giving design tips. I had zero strategy, no structure. I didn't take a course, which I should have at the time. And to be honest with you, I don't think a lot of people are interested how to create a website because now you have access to those platforms we're doing for you, for you, you know. And but it's always been in my mind because I always love videos, I love editing, and uh, and I'm a, and I'm a talker, <laughs> so that does help mm -hmm. as well. And then in 2020, when my web design agency dropped. Um, going to be a very healthy business to losing almost 80%, not bankrupt, but just 80%, which was enough for me to say, okay, now I cannot rely anymore with client one by one. I cannot. I need to really diversify my portfolio and what am I good at? And I was a bit 
tired of doing logos and websites because I've been doing that for 15 years, you know. Um, and I still wanted to do be creative, but it has to be lucrative somewhere. And I thought about YouTube and I give myself six months and I thought, you know what, but if I do it, I'm doing right. So I took a course. I watched a million videos. No, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> uh, I took notes. I, I learned how to structure my videos, to do a super short intro, go straight to the point, you know, and uh, all these things that you know yourself in a video. And, and, and it's not coming overnight again. I didn't have money. I was swimming with my phone, with natural light. I mean, like everybody. And I cannot stand to watch my first videos. I'm cringing. I think the first, first one, I was just holding my dog and talking about my dog and myself. And it was like, uh, introducing the Frenchies because I'm French and my dog is a French bulldog. So bad. So bad. Please never watch this video. <laughs> But we'll have a link to that to... in the show notes below. No, I'm no, just no, 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 please don't, don't, don't. <laughs> but you need to be bad to improve your game. You are not coming on YouTube and suddenly you're going to be like, oh, I'm born with it. It's not, it's not natural to talk uh, with a microphone and a camera and a lens by yourself in a room. This is not natural, you know. We are human. We like, we like face to face. But when you improve your game and after six months, I could see one of my videos got viral. So that did help. And the lockdown did help because more people were obviously uh, locked down and watching more videos. And YouTube was fantastic mm -hmm. for that. This is why long videos will not die for sure. Um, and yeah, then it, it started like that. And soon I've seen progress within six months. One day I remember watching the analytic. And I was with a friend going for a walk and I, I freaked out because from if I had 100 views on one video, I was so happy. I was like, whoa, 100 people are watching it. And then I had a big increase of 30,000 people and I freaked out. I thought, oh, 30,000 people already watch, how, how, you know, and then you get used to it. But it has to be like any business process. It has to be baby step or step one at a time. And um, I don't want to compare myself to Mr. Beast, but it's true. I was always thinking about it. I was watching videos. I was always, and still now, researching, asking my audience what they want to see. And you, you kind of obsess because, because it's, it's, it's amazing because not only you, you, you deliver quality content, but it's always a, such a work on yourself you know, all mm -hmm. the time. And I love it. I absolutely love it. That really is challenging me. If the day I'm bored on YouTube doesn't keep me on my toes or it doesn't help me to develop my other businesses, I will stop. But that's not going to happen because I can see it's just, I'm just at the beginning. And oh, I love it. I can wait. Am I go are we working super hard? Of course, you cannot success without hard work. Absolutely. This, this is not working like that. So, yeah. But it, it takes time. And if someone is watching this, this interview, you know, I just want to say never give up, but put a strategy into place. Do that. Be smart. Be smart. Because the time when you were on YouTube and suddenly you're a mega star in 24 hours, this maybe some people did, but I don't believe in that. It's all about hard mm -hmm. work. Mr. Beast, he worked really hard. And I did watch at the, the beginning of his first video. They were terrible. They were so bad. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm pretty sure we watched the same interview. But you know what? He was learning. This is what I said. And it's not a motto. You need to be bad to be good. And when you're good, you need to be excellent. And it keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's very well said. Yeah, that's very well said that you have to you have to really take your lumps initially when you're starting out in any kind of venture. Really that's kind of like a metaphor for life in anything. I mean, you're not going to if you like say you wanted to play a play a sport like basketball, you've never dribbled or shot a basketball before. You can't just expect to be dunking right away. You've got to work up to that you know um so yeah there's a lot of uh there's a lot of overlap there in so many other things in life when it comes to your approach to to youtube i also want to yeah. ask you about and, and this is another thing that you had mentioned and talked about a little bit earlier and i want to 
go into this a bit more is just being a woman who is over 40 that is doing YouTube. Like this is, you know, for, for, for just all, you know, just to be totally blunt here and straightforward is that there is an assumption that YouTube is a young person's game. Like we, I mentioned earlier that it's just millennials and Gen Zers who are, and now whatever is the, the generation below Gen Zers who are consuming and creating content on YouTube and that you're kind of like almost like bucking the trend for people your age. Um, like, was there ever any kind of self-consciousness within yourself when it came to, to, to thinking about doing a YouTube channel because of where you were in life? Or was that something that you said, no, I'm not like all the other people my age. Like, I want to do this. This is this is just who I am. This is just what I want to try to do. Um, I, I'm really curious about all of that. Okay. So, yes and no. I think I was more conscious about if people are going to understand my accent because mm. French people speak very fast. And sometimes when I get excited or passionate about something in English, I will speak very fast. And that was more conscious about that because I think, okay, that's, mm -hmm. that's, you know, I don't care about my age, 40s and your 30, 60s and your 50. It doesn't matter. It's all about your energy because I think people can feel that. It's all about your energy. It's all about, again, your quality content, your personality. I'm not going to be the cup of tea of everyone. And I'm totally fine with that. You know, I'm totally fine because I know what I do and create is totally genuine. And if you don't get my sarcasm, it's fine. It's not for everyone. I don't care. But it's so many. Mm -hmm. I can see in the comments say, Oh my God, that was so funny. But not everyone get it. Oh, sometimes people get offended. Hey, you know what? It's okay. I don't want to be this nice, clean, proper little girl behind the desk and say, Hey, we're going to, no, this is not me. I tried. I really tried. And then my person yeah. just burst, you know, and I'm like, say something super silly or I made a beauty video. It's only at the end. I realized I had all lipstick all over my teeth. <laughs> it just literally, and I'm like trying to be a beauty guru is just a disaster because I can laugh about myself. So no matter, sorry, I'm going to answer to your question. No matter how old you are, if you have fun over what you do, if you help someone else, and if you are able to laugh about yourself and be real, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just do it. But no, I've never been conscious. Sometimes, yes, you know, when I'm too close to the camera and editing, I can see my wrinkles. I can see this is not perfect, but we all aging, we, you know what? And yes, uh, do right. I want to have a body and face when I was in my 20s? Absolutely. But in terms of my head and the thing, I had a really, really busy and good life and I did all my best to do that. So I'm happy. I'm not like, hey, and guess what? 40s is really not old. Remember when you look at picture of your grandmother, they were around the same age. They didn't look like us, you know? I mean, like me, because you're in your thirties. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not yet. It's coming, Jonathan. Trust me, it's, it's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> However, the difference, I will say this though, Frederic, I am Asian. And so Asian don't raise in. There is a saying. Yeah. We will look, I am going to look like this for probably Ever? the next 50 years. And then eventually I'm going to get really old when I'm in my eighties. <laughs> I hate you right now, but you know, you're probably right. You're probably right. Just stay away of the sun, okay? We are SPF, but you know that. <laughs> yes, yes. No, definitely. Well, I, you know, there's something that you said there that I want to also touch base on and ask you about, and that's just, you have this courage to be disliked. Um, like, you're okay with not everybody accepting or liking what you create and put on YouTube. Is that something that you learned while creating on YouTube? Or is that something that you feel like you've been cultivating as you've just gotten older I throughout your entire something, life? I think it's something about life. You know, when you, I'm going to take something different. You have friends. Okay. And some friends, they here for a purpose in a moment of your life. And some, sometimes you have a fallout. Sometimes they leave and maybe it can happen with a boyfriend, girlfriend, partners, okay? And you cannot be a pleaser all your life. 
and especially when you're aging, I hate this word, <laughs> because mm. when you're aging, your confidence is much higher because you, you, made, you made mistakes. And you know more about yourself and you know more what you want when you don't want. When you make those videos, it's exactly the same. At the beginning, I wanted to be a pleaser because I was so scared of a negative comment. You know, because at the end of the day, I'm tough, but I'm super sensitive, creative people. Yeah. You know, Ooh. But at the end of the evening, I got tears in my eyes, called my best friend and said, oh my gosh. And, and she said, no, 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 it's not personal. They don't know you. And um, so I don't know. I think, I think sometimes my heart goes to the very successful young creators where, who are making money very quickly whatever is on TikTok or on YouTube. And soon they do something that people don't like it. Uh, they, and I'm talking about debt threats. I'm talking about, I mean, it's feeling this is insane. They don't belong to you, you know, but sometimes they think it. So it's like a very fun line sometimes with social media. And this is why sometimes I think I'm super happy my audience are in their 40s. Because I mm -hmm. do believe we have the same life values. There's always going to be a troll. There's always going to be someone who's miserable. You can't change that, okay? But um, I don't want to be a pleaser. I want to be authentic. I want to be genuine and real. And if you don't like me, watch someone else. That's totally fine. If you like me and you, you like my content, we're going, to have, we're going to be on an amazing journey together. And I'm looking forward for that. This is where my focus and my energy is going for. That's wow. I feel so mature <laughs> right now with this answer. And trust me, if you know me, okay, I'm going to tell you a funny story. One of my Go closest ahead. friends um, uh, is uh, contacting me not long time ago. We haven't spoke on the phone for a while. He's in France. And, uh, he said, this is crazy what you're creating on YouTube. And he knows me since I'm 16, okay? And uh, he said, um, do people realize you're exactly the same in real life and you're more crazy? You're crazier, excuse me. <laughs> and I said, I think they started more they watching, more they get addicted or the more they get like, oh, you know. And I said, I think so. I said, I think just for fun one day, I'm going to have a big glass of Pinot Noir. I'm going to make a video and they're going to see the real Frederick. But that was the best compliment to of someone who knows me for so many years and said, you're exactly the same. And that's what I don't want to change. That I don't want to change. I can't change. I'm 40. I'm not going to change. I'm going to improve. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping. Um, and it's, it's like a, a work in progress for you, for, for everything, you know, for same, we always in a work in progress. If I might say, sorry, let to put something a little bit more intellectual in terms of your fitness and, and you, you're learning every day by, to, for me, listening to entrepreneur podcast, you know, and your business and your relationship with your partner, girlfriend, black friend, or my friends. Um, if, do I get angry? Of course, of course I am, you know, but do I react when I was in my twenties? Thanks God, I don't anymore. Even sometimes a little <laughs> bad voice, my darkness, like, oh my gosh, I can believe you just cut me the road like that, you F idiot on the road you're driving. And I'm like, okay, yeah. it's okay. I'm not going to give the finger. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I'm a mature woman. <laughs> but it's all about, um, it's all about enjoying yourself. And I think when you're certain age, you know yourself. And that helps making those videos. And, uh, and like I said before, my audience, um, yeah, they don't, they have their own experience. They have their own trauma in their life. You know, everybody, life is really hard, but it's all about how you're going to approach it and how you're going to see the next 50 years, you know, either you're going to approach it with optimism and positivity and surround yourself with a great group of people and family that support you. For example, you have a comment that's just horrible. And that's, that I think that's the key, you know, to keep going. Oh my gosh. Awesome. <laughs> well, Frederic, this was awesome to chat with you today. I mean, there is so much 
that we talked about. And just like with many other guests that I have here on the show, there's so many other things that I could talk to you about. So probably yeah. definitely at some point we will have to do a part two to talk more about uh, business related things regarding um, your podcast. I mean, not your podcast, your YouTube channel and everything that you're doing online. But I think that is a great way to book in this conversation. Just very poignant um advice and experience for creators who are probably going through that themselves, you know, trying to figure out how to deal with having the spotlight on them, because this is not something that is, um, it, it, it seems like something that you, you know, would be all positive fame, but definitely there are, there are definitely negatives and downsides to it and how you respond and, and react to it is, is totally within your control. So, um, to wrap this up, why don't you tell everybody where it is that, uh, we can find you on the internet and, uh, and follow you online. All right, so this is going to be complicated because no one can spell my name, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you can find me. <laughs> you can find me on Frederick Bros. I'm sure you're going to put a show note or something. Yes. And on social media, it's um, the handle it's uh, at ms Frederick. Uh, and when you write Frederick, usually when you Google Frederick, I should show up. Usually, because it's such an unusual name. And uh, yeah, and I'm looking forward to to see everybody. And can I say, Jonathan, thank you so, so much for this interview. You had so much fun. And I know with you, with you your talker, I do. And we could talk for hours. So oh, yeah. uh, and I, would love, <laughs> I know that. I know we, we talk a lot. And I would love to talk in the a, in a future, if you're interested as well, about more business, because it's so much I would like to share as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we will be in touch. Thank you, Frederic. Thank you. Bye. Hey there. Thanks again for joining me on this episode of the Video Craft Show presented by Video Husky. Just a reminder for all of you out there, if you are having trouble coming up with ideas or organizing your ideas, I should say, then get a free copy of our free scripting template. Doing so can help you organize and structure your ideas and help you to streamline your video editing process. Make sure to visit videocraftshow.com to learn more, and you can actually visit the show notes for this page to download your free copy, which will get delivered straight to your inbox right when you sign up to our email list. Gotta thank my guy Gio Fernandez for editing, producing this episode of the Video Craft Show presented by Video Husky. Also, a shout out to Paolo Lopez on graphics. A reminder to all of you, if you are looking to get videos edited, then visit videohusky.com to learn more. I'll see you next time on another edition, another episode of the Video Craft Show presented by Video Husky.